Hello guys and welcome back to another M Creator tutorial. So today what I'm going to be covering is really simple system kind of expanding the uh, custom fences tutorial that I did a long time ago. Uh, basically what that does is it, the original one uh, allowed you to have different block states like this and it ran on a MBT variable system. Well, this one actually doesn't use MBT variables at all. It uses um, just basic detection for blocks and it will basically act like, um, you know, like glass plane panes and stuff like that. Now it doesn't have the up uh, rotation, so it doesn't, it can't detect if there is anything above or below, but it can basically have all the same rotations, same, same as um, glass panes and stuff like that. So uh, basically some uses that you can use for it is glass panes, uh, fences, uh, it's not very similar to walls, but you could technically use it for walls as well. Um, walls actually have a up, uh, I think an up direction te detection. So, uh, for example, if you put something here, then it would basically determine that there's something above, but um, it's more similar to fences. And um, if you place down the fence, you can kind of see that it has the cross sections and stuff like that. So that's basically what it does. And glass panes are exactly the same way. So if we find some glass panes, uh, iron bars as well. So iron bars is the same mechanics as glass panes. So this is kind of exactly what it's like. Uh, again, fences do the exact same thing. It's just that they're more of a full block than anything. So that's basically how that's set up. And you can actually add some AI properties. So you might have noticed that the chickens aren't actually getting out. And that is because we have AI properties basically telling um, entities that it is a fence. And we can actually disable that if we want to. I'll explain how that basically works. But basically entities will try not to um, stand on the block and hop over. So you can actually add it so that they don't go through it and stuff. So basically I've just encased these chickens and they basically are only able to go within the two by three area of where the fence is. So that's basically it. Uh, let's go into the project files and I'll basically show you the basics of all the different models and stuff. All right, so there are a few different things. Uh, the In the project files, there is the workspace. So you guys can test and update the workspace as you need. So it's like an example of basically what we're working on. Uh, textures, you will need one item texture for your display item, and then you will need um, your actual block texture. So in this case, I've basically set it up so we're using two textures. Uh, one is for the glass pane part, and this is the glass pane part, and then we're using the post texture, which is here. I could have probably fit it in the same one, but um, it was just easier to separate the textures and stuff. Uh, when I was modeling, so I didn't need to update all of them at the same time. And if you need to actually change the different, like make different um, glass parts or something like that, like stained glass or something, but want to keep the post, then you can actually just replace that file instead. So there's that. Uh, for the procedures, there are a bunch of them. I'll cover that in just a second. But basically, uh, there are a few different script ones, which is the... Uh, half, uh, the I, which is basically like a straight uh, connected one. There's L's, which are like L-shaped. Uh, the main update procedure runs all of these ones here. And then there's also the post, which is also run by the main T and X. So basically, I've tried to keep the letters of similar to what the uh, shape are for the actual... Um, models themselves. So T is basically like a cross section with three points. X is basically four points. L is a corner piece that goes kind of like an L shape. I is straight from one direction. And then there's your half, which is only half of a connection or one connection if at any. And then you have your post, which is no connections. And then you have your main variable. Uh, 
main update tick, which basically loads all six of these um, different script files and brings it into a main procedure for basically running. Uh, the other one that we're basically doing is a like a block change. I'll explain how that one works in just a second, but it's basically um, basically runs a script uh, for neighboring blocks as well. So it updates neighboring blocks if a block is updated uh, through the player breaking or placing an item on placing the block and then it will basically say hey I've changed and tell the other neighboring blocks so uh, models wise uh, there's also the um, different block bench models here as well as the uh, actual models that I've used in the tutorial here for the shapes and stuff so you guys can use these in your projects if you want all right, so that's the files themselves, and I will cover the procedures next after um, the blocks. So we have all the different types of blocks. You have to actually add each individual one of them. I suggest naming your original, um, your original one that you're going to be placing. This should be your post. And what you want to do is you want to name it just a generic name, and then you can basically add on to that name for di the different shapes and stuff. For example, I've just said glass railing, and that's going to just display the uh, glass railing uh, tag. It'll just be easier to use the namespace when giving yourself the item, and you don't have to type in all the other shapes and stuff like that. Uh, there's also the half, the shape I, shape L, shape T, and shape X. So those are the other block states that I'm basically using, which aren't really different block states, they're just different blocks. So that's basically that. Uh, if we go into the railing, you can see that we set our um, block item texture, which is basically allowing us to use a item texture for uh, displaying the actual item like the block when we're actually holding it. This just makes it a little bit cleaner when we're using the models and stuff like that. There's also the block particles I've selected. I've also selected just the post texture. It doesn't really matter because it's all run through the actual um, models when we're actually, actually adding the te textures. Uh, you will need to set the Y axis rotation to the S, W, N, and E rotation for the player side when the player fate basically places it down. Uh, this just enables the uh, southwest northeast uh, direction for the block and you want, uh, depending on what you want to basically do, you will uh, might want to add water logging. Uh, I think glass panes are water loggable so you might want that and you would want to select this one down here. It is a transparent block so you want to check that and uh, enable cutout so it's basically set up that way. Uh, then you want to basically set up the block bounding uh, directions and stuff like that, the size for the block bound, bound bounding box, pardon me. And the properties, um, pretty simple stuff. Uh, for your post, you don't need to worry about the drop so much. You can just set leave it at one and have it drop itself, that's fine. The other blocks, though, you want to basically have it drop the post itself. So you want to set the uh, custom drop and the um, creative pick item to the post, which is the block that we're currently in. I've set the um, sound for glass because it's kind of like a glass block. And I've set the properties for glass panes, which is hardness of 0 0.3 and resistance of 0 0.3. Uh, I put it under the decorations tab because that's basically where glass panes are. Uh, material type, I didn't want to use stone or metal. So I basically got, went and used wood because then we can just break it with our hand. That's similar to how um, fences work anyways. So we can do that. And I've just given it a GUI name. Uh, one of the things that you will need to do is make sure that all the blocks uh, have the tick up update and use all the same settings. You can basically duplicate a block and then just update some of the minor ch changes like um, for example the the creative pick item and the custom drop item if you need or if you want to have different properties for different ones that aren't required then you can basically do that as well. Uh, the AI 
uh, AI path, path uh, node type. Basically what this does is if you want to make it similar to a fence where entities don't go over, you want to set it to fence. So you'll have to scroll down a little bit, uh, but it's um, a block just right down here it says fence and basically what this will do is the entities will see the block as a two block or two block tall um, object and they won't try to go over it um, if you leave it at default though then entities can hop over it like a regular block um, similar to um, just a regular cube like dirt or something like that they'll hop over it and come out and stuff so if you want to make it something like a fence like a wooden fence or a wall then you want to set it to fence uh, outside of that that's all the properties that we need here uh, there is no MBT so if you wanted to add your own MBT or whatever you would have to enable this for all your block states and uh, you would need to set up the properties and stuff for them uh, as you wish uh, no fluid or energy storage we didn't need that and this is where the technical part comes in. So the update tick, all these procedures are constantly set up through all the blocks. So it's just running from one procedure uh, for all of them. And you don't need to worry about uh, having to make individual files. It's just this one, or should I say these uh, two procedures that are basically running. Um, we have the, I believe the one, custom fence block changed so this is running for um, all three of these so when the player destroys the block when it, the block is destroyed by an explosion and when the block is added now when the player places the block you don't actually need to do it because it's running through the added part as well so you don't need to necessarily link it up with a player placed by uh, the only reason for this is basically we're notifying the blocks next to it and um, it's basically going, hey, I have changed. I need to be updated. Uh, can you do a run a test quickly to see if I need to be changed? So that's basically what it is. I'm not sure if it's actually needed at the at right now because I didn't have the uh, update tick uh, set up at the time of creating it. But um, just as actual script, it, it's best to have it just in case. Uh, the other thing that we're having is the update tick. This is our main update tick procedure. Basically what this is doing is it's going to run the script files for each individual model. Now each one, each shape that we have is running its own procedure. Uh, this not only basically keeps the file size for the procedure short, but it also helps with performance. So we're basically just using a main update procedure to run all six of those or six or seven i think there's uh seven of them uh, we have the post half the i shape the l shape the t shape and the x shape so all these are the different procedures uh, i've also added notes so you can see what ones you actually need it's uh in caps for the actual type so it lists all the different ones here um with that being said, what we have for the block added, we have a string tag. So this won't be compatible with 1.21.1.1. Uh, 20, so because of the string variable is made at a later date, it won't be compatible with uh, older versions. That particular version between that had that string issue. So unfortunately that won't be supported. But uh, what this basically does, it allows us to um, set our namespace for the item. Now it says namespace here. Again, it has the comments so you can kind of see where, what are which. And then the tag and the tag name is basically pasted in here. There is a tag that runs all the scripts. So I'll cover that in just in a second. Um, what we're doing then is we're basically testing if the block in the connected to the side so forward backwards left and right of the block as well as the current block uh, is tagged with this tag right here so this is all pre-filled so you don't actually need to use the uh, what do you call it, the colon or anything like that you just put your namespace in here 
and you put your tag uh, that you basically named the blocks for that group in here. You can use the slashes to make categories as well like I did with this one. That will work just fine. And then it's just basically using that string for the um, tag name for those. And then we're running the update main update tick procedure for all those blocks. All right, so there's that. And again, those are all the same. And that's the update tick uh, generation. There isn't any particular generation, so we can just move on. Uh, we'll cover the other blocks in just a second, but I want to cover the tag quickly. And we'll go here. And what you can see here is I basically added a category called custom. And then I did a slash and then I basically put it under the glass railings um, tag name. Uh, again, it's under the mod namespace. So this is the namespace displayed in your uh, workspace settings. It's under the mod ID slash namespace. And it's this one right here. This way it doesn't have to like override or have like go with other um, mods to actually link up to things. Uh, people might use things like glass railing for other things and you don't want to have conflict with that. So it's best to put it under your own mod namespace. Um, things like Forge or Minecraft might run into issues with uh, compatibility and might cause some issues with other mods uh, if you do it that way. So using the mod namespace is probably best for this particular thing. Another thing is it's blocks and you want to basically add all the different blocks uh, for your fence into this uh, category here for the tags, all of them, not just a few of them. And uh, then we have the other blocks. So the other blocks are basically the same, just the model is different. Uh, we have all the same properties, um, the display name and the bounding box is different as well. So the display name is different. We're actually using the custom drop for the fence post and the create a pick item as the fence post, but all the other settings are the same. Property wise, uh, same and uh, MVT, same. Uh, you can basically cu customize it how you want. And all the, the variables or procedures are set up the exact same way. So the only things that you actually need to change is the display name, the uh, drop properties and the hitbox, as well as the, um, model and the actual um i think just the model so everything else is the same so that's basically it that's consistent through all of the different um shapes so you don't need to worry about changing too much it's you can literally just change this one and then duplicate it all the other times for your different models and that's basically what i did here all right, so the procedure wise, uh, these are a little bit more complicated. So the script ones are basically the custom fence update tick. I think this is I update tick. So this is the I one, which is the straight and forward. I'll, I'll show the models in just a second. But um, basically, again, your namespace and then your tag name needs to go here. This is the same exact one as you need for the other procedures that I showed. And this will basically always tell you what shape it needs for the model. So this in our case is the eye shape. So we would basically set up the eye shape for the model here. And this will run all the rest of the script without needing to be customized. Uh, basically in just what it's doing is it's basically going through each different possibility for the rotation and like the connected blocks. So if there's a connected block um, north, east, south, or west, and it's um, basically testing if it's not connected or connected uh, with a different amount of combinations. And lastly, what it's doing is it's basically testing if the uh, current block is not the same as the block that is basically it's going to be replacing. So if it's not that same shape, that it wants to update. After what we're doing is we're basically replacing the block. We're setting the block uh, block state uh, that we're basically created. And then we're making sure that it keeps the MBT data. Uh, this is just basically easier because if you add MBT data or whatever uh, the MBT variables, then you wanna make sure that it uh, keeps the inventory and stuff 
and you run into less problems. So I have automatically enabled that just so it's a little bit easier for compatibility and stuff. And then you're just basically setting the direction based on the um, rotation that it's basically going in. So for example, this is uh, testing for the south direction. If the south, well, it's testing if the side face south on the north direction, if it's connected to, it's a solid face. So if that is true, we're also testing if it's a, um, or if it's a glass block. So like the, our tag name up here. So it can be either one of these. It can be either a solid block or it can be our glass pane or glass fence or whatever we called it uh, with that tag. Now, if it is true, then we want to test for the other one, which is on the other side of there, which is on the south direction. And if both are true, then we're basically setting the rotation to north. If it's the other one, though, what we need to do is set it to east. So basically test for the south or east and west direction, if those are true. You can also notice that I'm using not statements and and statements to basically uh, test if it's not on that rotation. So that's basically that part there. And yeah, that's pretty much all the script that you need. All of the other procedures are configured for the different types of rotations uh, for the different models and stuff like that. So if we go into the L shape, uh, same thing. Uh, there's actually four rotations for this for possibilities. So there's four different lines of script here. So um, depending on the rotation of the block, it's going to rotate it uh, north, east, south, or west. So depending on the connection types. So that's basically all that. And again, you don't actually need to configure any of this. It's all configured through these two uh, parts right up here. So it's really irrelevant to actually even see that. And you can actually minimize it and it would probably help with performance and stuff. Um, the other ones, there is the post. The post is just one. We're basically, we're just testing if none of the connections are the, the same and if the block is not the post block itself so that's that uh, the T selection three are enabled one is disabled and again same exact system that I used before uh, the X position is basically just one we're testing if all of them are true and it's not the X model already uh, for the half which is four so we're testing for different sides one is only required to be true. Uh, the other three needs to be disabled. So that's basically that one. And then we have our main update procedure. That's the one that's running all those different scripts that I showed earlier. And then we have our block change. Now, um, I think I covered this. Yeah, we I've covered it. So yeah, that's basically everything that basically goes into making this system work. Um, I'll provide the workspace and the procedures, the textures, and the models as well in a GitHub repository, well, in the GitHub example repository for the discussions. I'll make a new tab for it so you guys can download it. But yeah, that's basically it. Um, one last thing I just wanted to show and make a quick announcement on is the actual rotation of the blocks. Now this is going to be really important when you're setting them up. So if you're going to actually model different designs and stuff like that, uh, you can do that. You just need to make sure that they're set up the same way as the block bench models that I've provided. So I've tried to keep it a very simple. Uh, it's always connected to the north for some reason. Uh, this is basically so it's easier to rotate when test the direction and stuff like that. So this is the pane for the um, actual part here. This is uh, the half direction. So it's just facing north. You have the post in the middle. And then we have, I'll just minimize that. We have the I direction which is facing north, but it's also facing directly across, which is uh, the south direction. And then we have the L shape one, which is facing north and east. So northeast are your corner parts. 
And then we have the post itself. This is just the post. You don't need any connection parts. And then what we have is the T selection. Uh, this one is a little bit different. It's facing straight, like north and south, and also east. So those are the rotations that have set it up. Uh, the reason for that is because the L shape already uses east, and it was easier to just copy over the script from the e the corner part, the L shape, and add support for the T sh or the straight shape as well, the I shape. And basically that just allows us to create a T-shape uh, model itself. And then we have the X-shape, which is all different sides for the block itself. So, and the post is in the middle. So that's basically all the different models. Uh, make sure to model them using the same rotations and stuff like that in Blockbench, or you'll run into wrong rotations when you're actually placing down the block. That's the only other thing that you need to make sure of. But outside of that, if you're new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe, comment down below, write the video, and I will see you guys next time. Thanks for watching.